Hello everyone, in this video we are going to learn about jobs in Azure Container Apps. Jobs are basically background processing tasks that execute for a finite duration and exit. And you only have to pay for that execution duration. Now when building modern applications, there are definitely background processing activities that you have to do like sending a monthly statement, sending emails at the end of the day or running some recurring processes every five minutes. Now these are the scenarios that you can implement with jobs. When container apps got initially released, there was only apps. There was no feature called jobs. But if you take any cloud native platform that allows you to build apps on top of like Kubernetes, um, Azure Functions or even app services, they all provide this like if you take Kubernetes, for example, they have jobs and, you know, to run cron expressions like this one, they have cron jobs. To run event-driven workloads, Kubernetes have this other project called KDAO, Kubernetes Event-Driven Autoscaling. We'll cover this one uh, and how this relates to job in my next video as well. And if you take Azure Functions, we have time triggers and uh, bindings to services like Azure Storage and uh, Event Grid. All these cloud native platforms, they allow developers to build these background processing scenarios in the platform. And jobs are the way that you can build these background processing services if you're building your new apps on container apps. Now, in this section in the documentation, as you can see, they have tried to differentiate the apps and the jobs because we have two types of resources we can create within a container apps environment now. You can use apps for running HTTP endpoints. If you want to generate a nightly report, you can use a job. If you want to continuously running service that listens to a service bus queue, for example, you can use an app, but you can still use jobs for listening to service bus queues as well. And that's where event driven jobs come in, I'll cover that later. The, one of the cool things is that you can use jobs to run uh, GitHub self-hosted agents as well. So these are the key differences between uh, these two services. Now, there are a couple of concepts that you should understand here. A job is basically a container and it's not a web container usually, it's a containerized version of a console app. That's what a job is. And when you define the job, you specify the image and the number of CPU and memory to allocate to it. Job execution is a single run of a job that is triggered manually on schedule or in response to event. So the idea behind this is that there are three types of jobs. You have the manual jobs, and that means you have to invoke it manually. You can invoke it, you know, going into the Azure portal, or you can use the REST API or Azure CLI to run the job, or you can use a scheduled one. That means you can use a cron expression, or you can have your job running in response to an event. Now, working with replicas, I will cover in my upcoming videos. So these are the key concepts that you should understand. And if I scroll down, as I mentioned earlier, we have three types of jobs, manual, scheduled, and event-driven. My focus today is to show you how manual and scheduled events work. Now we've covered the basics of uh, container apps jobs and let's see how we can provision one. Now, if I go into Azure portal and if I click create resource, if I search for container app and search for it in the marketplace, as you can see, we have container app, container app job, both. Now I've shown you many times how to create container apps. In this video, I'm going to show you how to create a job. It's not different than any other Azure resource deployment. You can specify the resource group and the you can name the job. So I'm not going to create the job here. I'll be using CLI to create, but I'll just show you the things that are involved when creating a job. You have to specify a container apps environment here because the job, so just like in apps, a job that is in a container apps environment has access to the environment's network perimeter. And here, this is how you select the job type. You can put it as manual. It can be a scheduled one. When it's an a scheduled one, you have to uh, add the cron expression here. And if it's an event-driven one, in the next page, I have to set the scale row here as well. I can put the rule name and row type. And this is where the Kubernetes event-driven auto scaling comes in. You can uh, pick one of these scalers and put its name here. Here you need to specify the image and image tag. And I've shown you many times how to create apps in my previous videos. Now, this is the key difference in jobs if you compare this to apps. Now first, let's create a small sample application that we can deploy. And usually jobs, they're not web apps. Usually they are console apps. So basically, they are, those are scripts. Create a new application. I'm going to create a new .NET console application here. I'm going to, in addition to hello world, I'm going to put the date time here as well. Now that is ready. Now if I just run it, 
and then I'm gonna add a docker file like this one I'm not gonna build it in my local computer I'm gonna use an Azure container registry for it I'll add this script here as well and I'll be attaching this code sample in the description down below I'm gonna run this command and that will build the image in an Azure container registry all right, as you can see, the container has been built and this is the container registry I have pushed that image into. And if I go into the repositories, you can see that the sample app is here. The next thing that we should do is deploying this to Azure using CLI. I've already wrote the, uh, the script for it. I'm gonna run this script. Um, this will create a resource group and a container apps environment on Azure. And I have shown you many times how to create container apps environments in my previous videos. The important bit here is that creating the container apps job. As you can see, we can pass in the name, the resource group and all that. The trigger type, this is what I've mentioned earlier. You can specify whether this job, it's a manual one or scheduled one or an event driven one. Now, if I go into the uh, documentation here, as you can see, there are many configurations that you can specify when creating jobs for example if i go into parallelism the this is the maximum number of replicas you need to run per execution if i scroll up as you can see we can pass in the arguments and the commands for the actual docker container and you can specify the cpv cpu and memory for that container if it is a scheduled ones you can pass in the cron expressions environment variables and the uh, content apps environment image maximum number of execution if it is a event driven one there are like a lot of uh, configurations as you can see which i will cover in my upcoming videos and here as you can see i have set the replica timeout and uh, some of the basic things so these are necessary for you to run a content apps job and i'm going to use the cli to run it all right as you can see we have created our first content apps job now if i go into the azure portal and the resource group that we have created we have the Kendra apps environment and job one that we have created. It's actually not very different than a Kendra app. As you can see, we have the uh, Kendra app environment shown here and we have the job related uh, information here, trigger type, execution history, replica timeout, parallelism and all that configuration are here. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click this button and execute the job. If I go into the execution history, as you can see uh, a new instance of the job is running now for each run this will uh, pull the image from the container registry and so you can ensure that it's running the latest image as you can see within 18 seconds now as you can see there are two types of logs we have the system logs and those are the platform related logs that says like pulling the image uh, whether the pull is successful and things like that it takes some time uh, for this to show the logs actually and we have the console logs and those are the uh, logs that you write to the console within your application so those are the two things and the next thing is i've used the azure portal to run the job you don't necessarily have to do that you can use the azure cli as well and this is the uh, the command that you can use to run the job and that is az content app job start the name of the job and the resource group if i pass this in i can just run the job manually and uh, as you can see in the execution history there's another execution this is how you can manually invoke the job and there's one more cool thing and that is as you can see here i've used cpu as 0.25 but when i run the job i can change that for that execution there will be more cpu allocated so let me just execute this one as well let me just name it job 01 all right as you can see I have uh, ran that one as well and the third job that is also running with different amount of CPU and memory and when it comes to CPU and memory actually we must cover the Azure Kenton Apps pricing uh, let me just go into jobs pricing page this is the pricing page and if I scroll down as you can see you're paying for the vCPU seconds and memory so let's say for example our job it took like 22 seconds to run right so how much should i pay for it so the idea behind is that i have to uh, multiply that by the uh, the vcpu seconds and that is like and this is basically what i have to pay for that job execution so let's say if i'm running it a month every hour this is probably what i would have to pay as you can see it's not much costly according to their documentation all right now i have covered the the pricing as well and one of the patterns that you can use to consolidate multiple jobs into one single container is that you can use environment variables you can put environment variables in different 
for different jobs. Like for example, you can use the same image, you can use the same image and you can have different environment variables for each job. And based on those environment variables, you can route your business logic. That's one way you can consolidate multiple jobs into one one single uh, container. The reason that I'm telling you this is that if you worked with Azure Functions, for example, they have the option to um, consolidate multiple triggers into one container image or one application. Now, in my next video, I'm planning to show you how to use Terraform to deploy your provision your jobs. And in the video after that, I'll show you how to work with event-driven jobs, and that is the coolest one of all. All right, so thank you for watching. If you have any video suggestions or comments, please let me know down below. I will see you with another video like this soon, and thanks for watching.